Well, it's hard to believe, but we're right at a week away from uh, Rosh Hashanah. Yom Teruah, the, the Feast of Trumpets, the, um, the first of the fall feast. I don't even know where February went, but here we are, mm-hmm. and it's, it's almost September. And so in the next week or so before we uh, celebrate Rosh Hashanah, um, the, the blowing of the trumpets, what, 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 is the, what are the trumpets um, a sign or a signal of? What's that? Coming. Okay, coming of Messiah, yeah. Uh, this, uh, and, it, and it's like, when you hear the sound of the shofar, it's like, um, it's so alien, isn't it? Um, it, it isn't like the sound of, of like a, uh, of a metal trumpet that we're used to hearing. It's, there's something primal, something uh, elemental, because it's not made of metal, it's made out of what? A, a bone, um, organic material. Um, it's, and so there's something there that, that harkens back that's, that's very ancient, and it's, uh, it evokes something. The sound of the trumpet is, is, a, is a signal for, for something, uh, that something's about to happen, uh, or instruction on how to, uh, to move, perhaps. It was, it was used, and we'll obviously get into more of that next week. But so the, the sound of the trumpet is a, is a call to attention, to change, uh, to awareness. And so we have, um, and how many days are there between Rosh Hashanah and, and Yom Kippur? Okay, so that, that 10 days is, is a time which is called the, the Days of Awe, uh, and it's a time in which to really kind of uh, plug in and really begin to, to look uh, even more so. Um, it, it's a beautiful time that we can use. Of course, every day should be for this, but because God is God, he likes to give us a, a period of time to be able to um, look introspectively at ourselves. What do we want to change? What would we like to see different about us? Um, what, what do we desire? And then it's also a beautiful time to do what? Um, so obviously it's about changing um, us you know, in our relationship with God, but what else is it a beautiful time for? Teshuvah, yeah. What's that? Reflection. Yeah, reflection. Um, healing. Um, so, I mean, of course, it should be every day, but again, period of time, we're, we're looking at how we can become um, more like our Father in our relationship with God. But we're also looking at how, how can we heal this plane, this horizontal relationship with our people. And so it's a beautiful time that is again, traditionally used as a way to repair relationships. It doesn't always fix everything, but we do what we can. We can't fix the other person. We can only fix us and extend that to, to someone else if they wish to accept it. So this, this uh, process of, of journeying, we're, we're looking again, looking at this next Shabbat towards this Rosh Hashanah. So it's a time in which we should specifically be focused on cleansing of the heart. Um, again, every day. It isn't just something that we do at times of the year. Oh, it's that time again. I guess I've got to focus on my heart. No, every day, but, but in, in specific times, we look at his holy days and we see, you know, what is that? The last song that we just sang, uh, who is, is able to ascend the holy hill? Um, what's that? Say it louder. Okay, um, whose walk is blameless? Who's, and, and when we say walk, does that mean that how we walk? Or what is it? What is the walk? How we live. The journey and how we live? Yeah, it's, it's what we do. And not just what we do, it's what? How we do it. What's the motivation behind what, what we do? Because we can do nice things and have hatred within our hearts. Because the external action Everybody can see that, but they can't see it inside of us. So it's about looking inside and saying, where is my heart? Um, If our heart is pure, then our actions will follow. Amen? Um, Messiah says, out of the heart proceed what? Blessing or blessings and cursings, um, blasphemies, things that are are, are unclean. Um, What's an example of something that's unclean that could proceed from us? Gossip, hurtful words. What else? Jealousy. Yeah, jealousies. What else? Mm-hmm. Anger. Yep. Pride. Yep. Pride. These are the things that come out of us, and it's, um, you know, if if you were to take a normal part of your body, and and you were to cut it, please don't. Uh, what would what would come out? 
thud. Um, if, you, if you had a, a sore that is fairly large, sorry for those of, of squeamish stomachs, and you were to cut that, that um, boil, what comes out of it? Not so great things. And so uh, that which is there comes out. And so likewise, whenever we experience certain things with people, whenever we do or say things, we ev evoke this response. And, and uh, what is in them comes out and what is in us comes out as well. Messiah says the kingdom of God is within you. Uh, what didn't he say in that statement? That you're, you're done, that you can just leave. Okay. You completed your goals. Okay. What else? What, what, the kingdom of God is within you. Okay. kingdom of God is not out here right now. Uh, wish it was. Uh, wish it was a whole lot different. Uh, he didn't come the first time to make this place different. He did, but he didn't. What did he come to do first? He came to change the hearts of men and women. He came to transform people from the inside out. Because when we're holy on the inside, then the actions reflected on the outside. Uh, the holy community is holy because it's, it's, it's a bunch of, of parts of the body together working. And it's, sometimes we have parts of the body that aren't functioning right, and it makes the other parts of the body work harder. But the goal of the body is so that the whole body is healthy. Amen? And so likewise, sometimes we're unhealthy and we come to community and it, it's a process that he uses to be able to change us and to heal us so that we can become healthy again. And that is because not one of us is the body of Messiah. It's the whole body. Every single believer. Baruch Hashem. Peacefulness of the heart. Um, he, says, uh, this, he says that this is a, a, a sign of something when we have a shalom. Uh, when we have a shalom, what does is, what is that I mean? If you could put it into words, um, maybe you felt it for a, for a second. Maybe you felt it for minutes, maybe, maybe hours at times. What is that, that peacefulness of the heart? What does that feel like? In your spirit and soul. Okay. So a relaxation, a, a, a calmness. What else? Yes, yes. How else does it feel? It's like the cares of this life, they don't touch us in those moments, in, 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 those, in those brief instances. This peacefulness, this peace which passes all understanding when it doesn't make sense. And, and none of us have that all the time. But we do from little bits and pieces here and there. When we say the cleansing of the heart, what are we talking about? Are we talking about this, this physical organ inside of us that's, that pumps blood? Or what are, we, what are we speaking of when we say the cleansing of the heart? Okay, cleansing it from the passions. Um, and what is, what is the purpose of our spiritual heart? Salvation. Okay, guiding us towards salvation. What else? To bring us into communion with God. Yeah. What else? What, is, what does the spiritual heart do? It does, yes. Yep. The spiritual heart is the faculty within us that connects to God, that allows us to be able to perceive and understand things. Um, the connection point that is the spirit of God living within us that reconnects us to God. When and our father Adam, um, father and mother Adam and Eve, they rejected God, they broke it, and God Himself is the one who fixes it. This reconnection. Um, if you have this um, this light bulb in a light, uh, and, and the switch is over there, and, and it's not turned on, um, the light will not appear, will not come on. Um, but when the light switch is turned on, there is an illumination that, that comes out of it. And our journey is becoming more and more bright, illuminated in his light. When I say illuminated in his light, what do I mean by that? His love. Okay, by his love. Um, if, when, when Rabbi Dan has the, the lights really, really dim, you can't see much in here, can you? Uh, I can see everything right now and nothing because the light's right in my eyes. 
but when the light is, is, is turned on and brighter that it gets, the more that we begin to see what's in the room. The brighter we become in him and his light begins to shine within us, what do you think that does to us inside? The, the closer we draw close to God, the more we become like him, the brighter it, it becomes within this house. And what do you think happens? It brings great joy and love from all of us. We couldn't wait to get here today. As you know, we've been missing a yep. time or two. Yep. Yeah. To, to see the light within us, what, what do we see inside this house? Yeah, and we begin to see the closer we draw close to God, the more that we see the truth of, of us. But he says, do not despair. Because it isn't that God desires to show us what's in our hearts. He wants us to par partner with him to, to, to take care of it. Um, God's desire is that every single person becomes complete in him. And we look around and we see people as we're driving or we see people that we work with or that we, that we, we work, um, you know, maybe, or maybe we go to places and we, and we see people and there's, there's always that one person, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, but is our heart for that person, or maybe it's multiple people, who is it, whoever it is, is it that they could become like God? Is, is that too far-fetched? Is, is, is that too much to hope for? Uh, that we would begin to see people like that? Or are they just annoyances and speed bumps in our day? Uh, or are they opportunities for us to extend the love? Even, and, and, and most oftentimes, simply through prayers for them. God have mercy on them. And it's God have mercy on them because I, I'm beginning to love people I don't know for reasons I don't understand. But I wish that they would become and be transformed like you. We have a love for people. Or is it, God have mercy on them. It's about, again, the truth in our, in, our, in our growing. If you please turn over to Galatians chapter 4. In verse, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4, it says, When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his, of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, which means father. And therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Messiah. So we see that our our, what we've been given is a taste of this experience of what it means to become a child of God. And he says that we are sons and daughters, that we're, that we're, that we're no longer slaves. Uh, which do you think is better? Slave, child of God. Uh, anybody want to be a slave? I don't think anybody in our right mind would say, ooh, ooh, can't wait. Uh, and so beginning to live like a child of God is a whole lot different than continuing in the way that we live as slaves of ourselves and of this world. What's an example of being a slave to this world? Or ourselves? What's that? Addictions, yes. Running the rat race, trying to get on top, get positions, get people to, to admire you, yeah. have the most toys, if you will. Yeah. That power. Sure. What else? What are... Okay, chasing material things. Worrying about what people think. Just busyness. Oh. Is busyness really good? Have you ever said, or have you ever like said to yourself, self, don't just do something, sit there? No, because we're programmed that busy is good, and if we're really, really busy, then we're even better. In fact, if we're so exhausted because we're busy, whew, I accomplished a lot. But no, it's about having times and appropriate times to be able to be still and be, again, focused on that which truly matters. Uh, when we get before God, he's not going to say, 
So, um, how was your 401k? Uh, hey, did you did you ever uh, you know cash in that IRA? Uh, you know about that investment um, in South Africa. I wanted to talk to you about that while you were living. No, he's not going to talk to us about our financial investments. He's going to be talking about our spiritual investments. What did we do with the gold of our time? How did we invest it in the kingdom? What's an example of, of investment in the kingdom that we could maybe name as investing the gold of our time? Tithe. Reading the word. Okay. Tithing, reading the word. Serving others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Serving others. Uh, mm -hmm. making, making disciples, yep. Yes. Um, if you look at and you remember what Messiah said when he said, these are the things that you didn't do. Um, he didn't mention financial investments. Um, he didn't mention uh, the acquisition of great wealth and other things. He, he, he said, the righteous have this and the, uh, the unrighteous have this as their legacy. And what was the legacy of the righteous? Taking care of the widows and orphans, yes. Okay, keeping themselves clean, unspotted from the world. What else? Uh, when, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, when I was thirsty, when I was in prison, when I was in all these places, when I had these needs. God says, you showed love to me. God says, you showed love to me as God by, by doing this for people. Um, you can't have one without the other can't love people and hate God, and we can't hate God and truly love people. We have to be those that are knowing that the inside is what dictates our love for God as well as what happens on the outside and what we do towards people. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. In verse 14, it says, For this reason I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Messiah Yeshua, from whom the whole family, the heaven and earth, is named. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Messiah may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, Okay, so he says inner man. Uh, what is he referring to when he says the inner man? The soul. The soul, yes. Mm -hmm. that, that which is an aspect of us. Um, the, when we say the inner life, what are we, what are we talking about? But the inner life is, um, is, is what we're focusing on. The inner man. What, what, what are we saying when we talk about that? Yeah. Uh, it's strengthening that aspect of us which is eternal, uh, which doesn't pass away, but continues. It's about growing and weeding. Do, uh, are there such things as spiritual weeds? Um, spiritual tares. What's a tear? Yeah. Um, I think they have them in Florida. I don't remember. Have you ever been walking through the sand, barefoot, probably at the beach, and you step on one of those, what's it called? I hate those things. It hurts so bad. Uh, it, it, it's like there's, there's things within us that are like those burrs, and, 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 and we throw them out of our, of our mouths sometimes, don't we? And somebody steps on them. Um, we step on things like that from others. Uh, it's it's this, this, this struggle that we are in. It, and it's about, he says that the inner man is what is, is, is being desired in the strengthening. Now, can we just be, just, can we just be spiritual all the time? Um, the spiritual is the only thing that we're concerned about. Um, if we focus on just the spirit, what are we neglecting? Our body, what else? 
yeah, the people around us. If we're simply focused on, on the spiritual things, you have to, you have, to have both. Um, because this, this affects the spiritual. Amen. And so it's about the balance of those things. Uh, we can't neglect the spiritual things, but we also can't say that that is it and that all, that's all I need. I, I, don't, I don't need people. So the heart. The heart is the place or is the spiritual aspect of us that represents our feelings and our will and for our thinking. Feelings, will, and thinking. Feelings is, is what? Okay, our emotions. Uh, and then our will is what? We desire, yes. Our determinations, uh huh. And then our, our thinking is what? Our thought processes, our, our, our physical minds. Man, we're complex, aren't we? We, we, got, we got this, this, this like three thing happening here. Um, what happens if, if one of those is, is out of whack? Yeah, if, if, if one of those is, is not functioning correctly, um, then it, it gives us, we're out of balance. Uh, and what, how we see things, how we perceive, how we respond to things, um, what's important to us. Um, if we have an addiction, what, what's important to us? Whatever that addiction is, whatever that is. Uh, addiction is not just drugs. It's anything that we crave more than God. And so it's about understanding ourselves. So our feelings, um, our will, and, and our mind. So how do we reorient um, our will. What is it that our, our will does for us? Mm -hmm. um, could, could you say that, that the will could even override the thinking? Yeah, sure. yeah. It's, even, it's so important to God that he even put it within a prayer that he would say, to, to us, that he would give to us as a gift. He says, you know, that, what? Your, Your will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Messiah himself, in that moment, in the hour of his temptation, he said what? Not my will, but your will. And, and so, to, to, to tune our wills, we have to be asking for God, for his will to be done in our lives. <coughs> Father, show me your will. Father, help me to cast aside my own delusions, my own clogged ears and, and stuffed, stuffed up heart that I, I, can, I can hear you. I said, Father, open the doors and close the ones that are not you because I, I'm, not, I'm not wise enough to always know. And we have to be those that are, are seeking to, to harmonize those three aspects of ourselves, our emotional aspects, our will, focusing on his will, and then our minds. Um, why are our minds so important to God? What's that? Okay. What else? Well, why why are, are our thoughts so important? And so to harmonize those aspects of ourselves, it's just, it's so vital, so important. Um, because if, if we're out of joint, um, what, what's, there's another scripture that comes to mind. Um, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Uh, the spirit, you could say, is, again, that ultimate aspect of ourselves, which we, we, we have moments that we connect with it and we desire what, what God wants. And then there's the aspect of us that is, is so programmed, so it feels so natural to desire what we want, right? And saying, you know, not my will, Father, but your will. Lord, teach me to crave only that which is you, only that which will help and, and it will be able to um, build up what you desire within me. 
And so our objective as believers is to unite these three aspects of ourselves so that we can, and when we say purification of the heart or cleansing of the heart, what, what, are, we, what are we saying? Um, a growing of the what and a, a destruction of the... Okay. Okay. Growing of the virtues. Let's see, the purer our hearts are, the more we're like God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Only those that are pure will be able to ascend the mountain of God in, in this journey. If we are out of whack in these, in these advent aspects of it, we become what the, the teacher, um, James, a.k.a. Jacob, he says about this person who, who desires the spiritual but does the physical. What, is it, what does he say of that person? A double-minded man or woman is what? Unstable in all their ways. Why are they unstable? What is unstable about a double-minded person? Okay. He's torn between spiritual realities and the reality of the world. Is the, is the reality of the world enticing? Yes. Sometimes. What, what, what could entice us about this world, this, this, this realm? It promises excitement, fulfillment, entertainment. Uh, anything that we're predisposed to be attracted to. Okay. Um, what else? Comfort, pleasure. For a little bit no price. Just 1995. Yeah. Act now. Act now. Yeah. Wait. 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 I mean, there's still more? There's more. Wow. There's more. Huh. You know, um, people that write the ads, they're not stupid. They're, they're very, very uh, wise in, in, in being able to, to position it. So the cleansing of the heart, to be not double-minded. So what is a, a, a powerful tool in this journey towards the purification of the heart? Prayer, Prayer? yes, amen. What's that? Fasting. Fasting, yes. Patience. Oh, yes. Yes. Patience. Say again. Say the value of God's Yep. Yeah. And repent. Yep. Repent. Yep. Doing teshuva. Um, you know, we talk a lot about teshuva. Isn't it inconvenient? I mean, um, what, I have to repent again? Um, if we're ill, if we say, I'm not ill. What are we saying? Yeah. We're, we're basically saying, eh, I'm sick, but yeah, I'm not really sick. If we say that I don't want to do it to Shuvah, I don't want to repent to God, we're saying, just find the way I am. But God is desiring us to be like him. And so in order to do that, we have to be those that, that are, are courageous enough to be honest with ourselves, that we're not okay. Um, what time is it okay to be able to say, I'm fine the way I am? Never. Never. No. But that's so, that doesn't build up my self-esteem, we might say. What, what, isn't there a way to compromise on that? I mean. Isn't, can I say, like, I'm pretty okay? Sure. But in honesty, um, if we say, I'm ready to run a marathon, but I haven't even gotten my track shoes on yet, or running shoes, I suppose. If we say, I'm, I'm running this race, but we haven't even registered yet, what are we doing? We're fooling ourselves. And those that run a race don't just register for the race, but they also, what? Prepare. Prepare and train so that when the race happens, they're not just uh, walking off the street out of um, you know, the bistro, just have, having had a, you know, a nice three-course brunch, a couple of uh, glasses of bubbly, 
uh, and to go out and run the race. If they do that, what's going to happen? It's going to be messy. <laughs> no, we have to prepare and train and then run the race as we have trained. A soldier in battle doesn't miraculously know how to fight, do they? A soldier, what? A soldier trains for how they want, wish to perform in battle. And likewise, uh, does a soldier ever go, well, I've trained enough. Now I can kick back and just enjoy life until, oh, 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 okay, general, I'll go to war now. Yeah? No. The soldier is always training. Um, as, as a police officer, did you ever stop training? No. Every, every yeah. Why would you keep training? You know, you're um, you're, you're a couple weeks from retirement. Uh, did you go? Whew, I guess I guess I can just coast these la last few weeks. It is. Why do you think it's dangerous when we uh, are close to retirement or that we, we feel like we, we, we've achieved a certain plateau? Why, why is that dangerous? What's that? Okay. You start thinking that you finished. You're already done. That's why many, many soldiers die in combat usually within weeks of going home. Yeah. Because either they have weeks of getting there or weeks of going home because their, their sense are not attuned. They're not sharp. Yeah, and if we let our guard down, see, I've heard it said, and I've, I've, I've literally heard, it, heard this said, like face to face with somebody. I'm not worried about anything. These are, these are believers. I'm not worried about anything because I'm saved. And, and, and many of these people that I'm referring to are those that are the most lackadaisical in their, in their lives because they have a false confidence in something and they let their guard down. And if we let our guard down, we're, we're, we're vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. One of the greatest attacks of the enemy is delusion. And what is delusion? Believing something that's not true. Yep, yeah, believing something that's not true. Um, it's putting, um, having something that's, that isn't, isn't actually true. Um, but we think that that delusion is, is truth. And if we, if, we, if we say, well, I can just relax and coast into the kingdom, uh, I don't think it's the kingdom that we're going to coast into. Uh, not the kingdom of God. So to be those that are on this journey, and again, we're speaking of you know, reaching, looking towards Rosh Hashanah, uh, a time that we, that we celebrate his return, because, man, it's going to be awesome yeah. when he returns. It, it's, it, it's like the king is come. <laughs> And it's the greatest of everything that will, will, will have occurred. Next to his, his resurrection from the dead, his return to this earth is the most glorious thing. Um, who's not going to be happy about his return? Satan. 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 And who else? The liberal. Uh, what's that? Those who, don't. those who do not know him. Um, those who aren't expecting him and those who do not know him or love him. They won't be happy. But those that are counted as, as his, his people, a glorious time, um, a party. It's called the wedding feast. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be magnificent. Uh, poor words in, in our human languages don't even begin to capture the beauty of this. Um, it will be glorious to be with him. If we can hold on to nothing in this life, if we hold on to nothing, it, it should be, Lord, count me worthy to be found among those in your wedding feast. Do whatever it takes. Are we willing to say that and then live it? If, are we willing to, to, to put everything else aside? It doesn't mean that we don't take care of our responsibilities. It just means that our lives begin to focus on purifying the, the inside here so that we can be counted worthy to be 
there, in that place where we're, we're no longer, because there'll be, there will be those that will be, that will be, you know, he will look at and he said, how'd you get in here? But they thought that everything was copacetic, everything that was good, everything was, they were just fine. Um, does God want just fine? Um, when Solomon made the temple, did he just say, I'm just going to make it okay? Yeah, I, you know, it's pretty okay. It's a little bit off kilter. Gold's maybe a little bit, it's not really gold. It just, hey, I'm wiping it off. Uh, was he okay with that? What did Solomon do to, to prepare the temple? What did he put into it? The finest. The finest. Um, did, did he accept mediocre for the temple? The best craftsman. It was gorgeous. The, the structure, the, the ornamentation, it wasn't just, it wasn't gaudy. It was glorious. And that's what God wants of you and me. He wants pure temples, beautifully constructed. And, and what are the pillars inside of this temple within us? Yeah. The virtues are the pillars within us. And all of that holds up the roof, which is what? It's love. If we don't have the pillars, it cannot hold up the structure which crowns it. And so the purification of the heart is, is, is nothing more than the uprooting of the, of the passions within us, the, the distortions, the, the, those things, so that we can be growing in the virtues. Um, You think we would give up junk food and, and eat only Brussels sprouts? It, if we knew that we could live forever? I know. I know. I, I, know, that, I, I know that very few people out there probably like Brussels sprouts. That's why I chose it. So, would, would, we, would, would we deny ourselves? this for this in order to gain life. But you see those Brussels sprouts? They're not really Brussels sprouts. <coughs> it's a glorious and beautiful meal. It's all about how we perceive it. It's about how we look at it. And our denying ourselves in this life, it is hard and it may taste like Brussels sprouts at times, but it leads us to the wedding feast where we will be given all of the beauty and the glorious things which Again, is second only and to knowing the king himself. His works are not as, his works of his hand are not as important as knowing his face. And so our journey in this life is about wiping away all the stuff within our hearts so that he can begin to see himself. Because he wants us to be able to Know him. And what does knowing God mean? Okay. In, in intimacy with God? Um, what else? What, what is knowing God? Okay. Experiencing his goodness, yes. Knowing his ways and ordering your life along his ways. Okay. Ordering our, our lives and our ways along his ways. Okay. The healing of our brokenness. Uh, smoothing of the cracks, the uh, putting back together that which was broken. We used to have a, a, a clay pot that lived here. Uh, and it, it lived there for many years. And moving things as we do, this, this, this clay pot, uh, little pieces would get broken off of it. And when somebody would break it, I would be like, it's okay, don't worry about it. We'll just put it back inside. So by the end, there was this clay pot that was a little bit broken. Maybe it was a lot broken. And all those pieces were inside of this pot. And we use this as a beautiful spiritual metaphor for the fact of whatever's broken in us can be repaired. It can be reformed. And not even just reformed, but made even better than it was. It's taking this earth and plastering over it in gold. And enough gold on the outside of, of this plaster um, creates 
a pure structure, that, that even if the earth deteriorates within, the gold remains. And so it is with our lives. This body will deteriorate, but the gold of our hearts will remain forever. So may you and I be those that are seeking after the, the things of God. Amen? Amen? May we be those that are constantly concerned about the things of the kingdom and those in the process of the purifying of the heart so that we can be found ready on that day. Abba, we ask for your presence in our lives to be even stronger. O oh Lord, when we uh, become uh, weak or lackadaisical, O oh Lord, that you spur us to action. Father, for the times that we, that we need your rest in you, O oh Lord, we pray for your peace and your comfort. Lord, we ask that you would be in your mercy guiding us along the straight path, which is the road to you. And not just to you, but becoming like you. And so that at the end of our lives, may we truly be found people that are peaceful, people that are gracious, and people that have an abiding love for all. And only by your, your true indwelling can we accomplish this. So we thank you for the great gift of your presence in our lives and the mercy which flows from you into us. We thank you for this, and we ask it in Yeshua's name. Amen.